As New York City prepares to bury two of its finest, New York City police officers shot and killed in the line of duty last week. The city is trying to figure out how to stop this violence. Well, Mayor Eric Adams has proposed aggressive steps to get guns off the streets, including bringing back the NYPD's undercover anti-crime units with new restrictions. It's something public advocate and candidate for New York Governor Jamani Williams does not support, however. Mr. Williams joins us this morning from Brooklyn. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Peace and blessings to you. We appreciate having you here. And just, let's just get to it. The anti-crime unit coming back, better trained, all equipped with body cameras to hold them even more accountable into the neighborhoods where most of this violence occurs. You don't agree with this. Help us understand why not this morning. Well, one, I've been a leading voice on this issue for the past 10 years. And if you go back, you see market success on some of the areas where our, our ideas were employed 10 years ago, put out a report. It took three mayors uh, to finally have a mayor, although the last mayor did fund some of it and want to give him his credit, but it took three mayors to finally agree on the holistic approach that should be structuralized to address nonviolence. And so there is a lot in that plan that there is alignment with. And so I want to make sure we focus on that as well. Um, I do have some parts where I wholly disagree. Uh, when it comes to this unit, uh, I have some major concerns. And so we're trying to get answers to those concerns uh, about um, when, how that unit is going to be used. Uh, it has a different name. Uh, it has some different things changed, like uh, uni uh, uniforms that are identifiable. But we are worried about remnants of the past units, where we've seen some of the worst behavior and worst uh, tragedies that occur. In addition, we are already getting a record number of guns off the streets. Uh, but we need to focus on getting those cases moves through the courts and so i'm trying to figure out what is it that will be provided by this unit i want to ask you about the defund the police movement uh, it was just a major thing that a lot of people focused on the past couple years uh, you were part of that movement there was some anti-police sentiment enmeshed in that not necessarily coming from you but do you think that maybe unfairly put targets on the backs of police officers especially recently with officers wilbert mora and jason rivera we lift up those officers uh, we lift up uh, the baby spinner first year, uh, first year in surgery. We lift up Michelle Go. We lift up Crystal, who was shot in Burger King. Uh, I would just challenge folks to find one video, not two, uh, where you saw me saying defund the police. You won't find it uh, because I did agree that uh, the messaging could have been altered a bit. I would say, however, Democratic leadership and leaders in general spent more time trying to tell people who were in trauma in the streets. How to, how to address that trauma instead of using our power and ability to take that trauma, turn it into real policy and real legislation and real programs to address it. And that's where we fell short. We had a great opportunity to have a conversation about what public safety is and what is not. Mm -hmm. And so understanding that aligning, specifically equaling policing with public safety without so many of the other things are actually unfair to the officers and unfair to the communities. And that's the type of leadership that we need and not the fear mongering, making policy by headlines, because we've seen in the past that sometimes causes other issues in communities. But Jamani, it just seems like a lot of people, and I mean, I've heard it out in the street as I'm reporting, people are scared. They're worried going on the subways, the crimes increase in the city. You know, you don't want the anti-crime unit. You know, you wanna, you wanna make it different. How do you think now is the time to kind of put the money into initiatives? Shouldn't we do something a little bit more proactive? So a straight bullet went through my mother's car while it was parked in front of her house. Thank God no one was in it. A, a homeless man who clearly had mental health issues spit on both sides of my sister's car. She was afraid. These are issues we've been dealing with for a very long time. I want to be clear, uh, as a leading voice, we got the city to the safest point it has been in 2018 and 2019 through the initiatives that I'm talking about and part of the plans that the mayor is talking about. It worked. As a matter of fact, crime dropped more in those areas where we had these initiatives than they did on the rest of the city as a whole. And people who said the same things now that they said back then, if you're a victim of crime, data means nothing. But if you compare it to where we were in 2018, we were doing great. The major difference there is a pandemic. And so we have to do something. I understand why people are afraid. Law enforcement is a part of the problem. But every time we focused all of our attention just on the uh, law enforcement side, we come back and we apologize years later. We don't need to apologize years later. 
Okay. We have the ability to do this correct right now and save lives. Okay, so I want to switch gears a little bit, bail reform. Um, you know, Mayor Adams says it needs to be a change for defendants considered dangerous, um, and the minimum age a person should be charged as an adult. Kathy Hochul, the governor, is not saying too much, um, but just doesn't believe that judges should be given new power to keep the uh, pretrial suspects behind bars. Where do you stand on this uh, bail reform? Again, we have to focus on what actually works. And so the, the, the crimes that we mentioned had nothing to do with bail reform. Uh, when you look at uh, the cities uh, that are actually doing worse than New York City, as the mayor mentioned, they already consider dangerousness uh, and when they consider sentencing or holding somebody in remand. And they are actually more dangerous than us right now. And so what we want to do is all look at the same numbers, all look at the same things, and agree where we have to focus on. We agree that the supply of guns are problematic. We have to focus on gun trafficking and but, change some of those laws. But, Jamani, can, can I just ask you, though, sure. because, because Congress has not done anything about uh, passing any kind of gun reform. So what do we do here right now? Because D.A. Alvin Bragg said that... That is 100% correct. They have failed. We can, I love the idea of the, uh, the law enforcement working together, city, state level, to deal with the trafficking for the laws that are being broken right now. 100%, 6,000 guns were taken off the street last year alone. Too many of those cases haven't gone through the court system. So you want to change some of these parts that haven't done anything to deal with this crime instead of fixing the things that we know right now. We know that intervention from the crisis management system and the community groups that have been working there have worked in communities. This is not pie in the sky. We've seen the effects of it. And so as a leading voice on this issue that has shown evidence-based models, we have asked the governor. The last governor almost got this right. He asked municipalities and localities he withheld money and said, I need a policing plan from you. What he should have asked for was a public safety plan and demand that all localities and... But and, it, could, and, it could work in conjunction with a policing plan, because I think that's, you know, something you could do together. However, I know we're running out of time. Uh, you have I, a lot I, I going on. I want to be clear. Law enforcement has a role to play. Let's, I don't want to play that game. All we are saying is that we have to have the other parts or else we're not going to keep communities safe, and they deserve a public safety plan. We've put out our plan as well, mm -hmm. twice. We are on 2.0, and we're glad a lot of it aligns with the mayor. But the parts that have failed in the past, we shouldn't learn those mistakes again. Well, we appreciate chatting with you. You have a lot going on, especially as your candidate for governor. We'll have to chat with you another time, especially with a lot going on with your fundraising efforts. We appreciate you, appreciate you being on Good Day this morning. Thanks so much.